Okay. Learn type inference. We're going to go over, I believe it's homework three question. Is that right? Okay, cool. Okay, so we know we have this fun. We have a definition of a function f, which takes in three parameters, a, b, and c. And we say if b of a, then return c of a, otherwise return c of b. Okay, so the first thing we know, so the question asks us for the type of f, and so we know the type of f is a function that takes in a type of a, a type of b, a type of c, and returns some function type t1. We don't know what it is, we'll call it t1. Okay, so if we draw our abstract syntax tree, right, here we have a function definition, which is defining a function a, b, c, and it has an if statement, and the if condition is a call, and the other thing is b, the right one is a, and then if this succeeds, then we have a call where the left is c, the right is a, and then else we have a call, left is c, right is b. Is that correct? Yeah. If you verify it on the homework, just to make sure we don't start solving the wrong problem. Okay. Great. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so we've looked at this, right? We've written it out here. So we know this function uh, f is definitely a function that takes in a t a, t b, t c, and returns a t one. So then, what do we know about this node? It's a t one. Has to be a t one exactly. Great. Okay. So we have an if statement. So what do we know about the? the constraints of the parent and the children of an if statement. Exactly. The left one is a boolean, right? This is the condition. But the other ones have to be T1, exactly. Right? So that's what we talked about today in class, right? So here, so we're checking a condition, and if it's true, we're going to go down this path. If it's false, we're going to go down this path. So those Whatever path we take has to return the same value. Otherwise, it doesn't make sense. Okay, any questions so far? Pretty easy. Okay, <coughs> here we have a function invocation. So, um, what do we know from this function invocation about the constraints of its parents and its children? Left is the function name. The left is the function. And then the right is the parameters. Exactly. So this, we can see, has the type TA. And so this means B must be a function that takes in how many parameters? One. One. And what's the type of that parameter? Yeah. Two. And what does this function return? Boolean. Boolean. Right, which makes sense when we look at it here. So we know that B, because it's used in an, as a function invocation in an if statement, that whatever it takes in as type TA, that has to return a Boolean. Right, so B is a function that takes in a type TA and returns a Boolean. Perfect. Okay, then we go down this first branch. So then here we have another call instruction. Right, so this does exactly the same thing, right? So we just apply exactly what we did over here, over here. So we know that this node, so we know that this is a type TA. So we know that this node of C takes in one parameter of type TA and returns what? T1. Exactly. Which makes sense. So right, still we don't know what T1 is, but we know that, hey, whatever C is, it better return a T1, so it better return whatever this thing returns. Because otherwise this thing's not going to type check. And that thing that it returns is going to be the return value of F. Okay. Final call. So we know here this is TB. And here we have, so what does this call say? TB is a parameter for TC or C. Yeah. And what does it return? T1. 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 Exactly. <coughs> okay. So we haven't been keeping track, which we probably should. Um, but we can do this after the fact. It's not a big deal. So we have TA, TB, TC, and we have T1. Those are pretty much the constraints we have. Okay. So we know here that TB is a function that takes in TA and returns a Boolean, right? Mm -hmm. Here we have TA is a TA. Here we have TC is a function that takes in a TA and returns a T1. It's 
fine, right? Traits. Here TA is a TA, great. Here we now see that TC is a function that takes in a TB and returns a type T1. So <coughs> now we have to satisfy uh, now we have to satisfy these constraints, right? So type C, so we need to say, okay, how can we how can we make these the same? Right? So they're the same, they're both functions, which is good, because otherwise we'd have a type error. Right? If this was an array and this was a function, then we'd say, okay, this is definitely an error. So we say, okay, for this to be the same, well, the return values have to be the same, T1. Fine, we already have that. So now we have the additional constraint that TB is equal to TA. Right? Okay. So then TB So it has to take in a B, and B is here. Okay, good. Okay, so type of B takes in a type of A. Okay, so we have TB is equal to TA, which basically says TA is a function that takes in a TA and returns a Boolean. Yeah. And that does not type check. Why? Uh, because you'd have to infinitely replace this, and you could never... Well, we have an infinite rule if we do it more than once. It, I mean, why would it be any different if you had a TD, basically, and you had a circular reference in TD? Why would TA to TA be different than a TA to TD where TD referred back to TA? Did that make sense? I, I think it did. So you mean? I'm going, yeah, I'm thinking of structural equivalence uh, where we have that rule. Right, like a... Uh, but that's what I... Ah, uh, ah, uh, I see. So why is, yeah, yeah, something like that. An array of T, D. yeah. So why is, on the simple level, why is that different than what we're running into over here with the circular reference? Ah, because the type system can't, I, the type system can't express this. So it could be that they're structurally equivalent, but that the Hindy-Milner type inference can't infer that these types are the same. So there's, there's a difference there. Because these are recursively defined, Hindley Milner will say, I can't create a type for this. Which makes sense, because this, just like, so. It wouldn't treat it just like that, though? Why wouldn't it? I mean, why wouldn't it, I guess, treat it just like that? Because it doesn't have any additional information like the compiler would. So here's the difference. Um, so you can actually do this. Yeah, so here's the difference. You can. The problem is you can do it in a real language with pointers, but not with actual structures, because you can't build this array, right? You can't ever build this finite array of arrays of arrays of arrays of arrays of arrays of, right? It's an infinite array. But if you had a T, <coughs> uh, I'm running out of letters, E and F is equal to. Pointer to TF. Right. But our program had to support at least the TDTA example. That we, and that was supposed to be implementing. Your program? Yeah, pro Project 3. And it was implementing Henley Miller. Checking, and it supported it. Oh, so oh, oh this, but because I you think this is a limitation of the actual language you're using, and I didn't yes. pick up on that when the when the, when yes. the homework question yes. was asked. So the language, the Project Three language, specifically doesn't allow. Like, I don't think you can create oh, yeah. types like this. Oh yeah, I did. No, 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 because all you one of my tests. all you have is you have basic types, 
but there's no arrays we'll or arrays for today. Okay, so change it to instead of array of TD is equal to TA and TA is equal to TD. Ah, uh, yes, yes, yes. So it will support that. I'm certain I tested. So that. yeah, so that's actually the thing, right? So even in Hindley Milner, that does support this. So what? Because this is a constraint. So that's right. the thing. Here it's a constraint. The constraint is TD is equal to TA. Okay, great. I know that they're the same. And here you're saying TA is constrained to be the same as TD. Great, that doesn't conflict with anything I know previously. I still know they're the same type. So why is The that? problem is trying to say TA is the same type as an array mm -hmm. of TAs. Right, here you can never satisfy this constraint. So you couldn't say TA is equal to TA. You could also say that. You could say TA is equal to TA, right? We do that all the time. We say here, this is TA, this is TA. I mean, depending on how but it did. So this is a constraint you can satisfy. Okay. Right? You can say, okay, TA is equal to TA. Done. How does that differ from TA is equal to the function call with TA pool? So these are the same, whereas They're the same. Uh, you're defining an infinite type here. Like this type, you're constructing it recursively. So if you were to expand that out, you can't ever expand that out. But here, there's no expansion, right? You're not creating a new type. You're saying that, hey, type TD is another name for type A, and vice versa. I think it just mentioned, like, in the textbook, too, if you run into that situation, it's, it's supposed to be an error, or a type mismatch. So. Or the other way, you define it that way. Yeah. <laughs> that would help. Uh, yes. That was the thing for this, right? It was a type error? It was a type yeah. error yeah. that I didn't get. So I, I was getting there and I was like, oh my gosh, did I mess everything I up? Everything. <laughs> I couldn't remember which all was which, so yeah, I didn't. I got everything but the type yeah. error, but yeah. it's that yeah. subtlety, and I think it, it's related to the language type, which mm -hmm. is where it's the functional language exactly. type, too. Yeah, because if you can never create arrays or pointers or structures, then all you have is basic types, so then it's type equivalence is a lot easier, exactly. So you never are going to get into this situation because you can't, you can't really construct new types in that language. You can just give the new types different names, and you can specify constraints on those types. So you can say that like, hey, types D and A are the same, and types A and D are the same. But you can only ever say that those are one of the basic types at some point. Since we don't know what TA or TB is. In this exactly. Right. Good question. The dig deeper to see if there's a a deeper app more. Well, the question would are I don't know if my program would, if Project Three would support the TA to TA. It should, but I don't know if it would. And well, if you had something in the program like I, X is an A, right? X is type A. Yeah. Then you have Y is type A. That would definitely work. It'd be an implied A. Right. Because you're saying, well, and then later on in the program you have x is equal to y. So you're basically saying the constraint that type A is equal to type A. Yeah. That's the constraint that you're satisfying. But yeah. you're just looking it up by comparing the types. But it's getting the dysfunction call that causes the right. problem over here. This is the type construction, exactly. Because you need to deconstruct these functions in order to so say, OK, for this type to be equal to something else, that means whatever's inside of it, the parameters have to be structurally equivalent, and the return value has to be structurally equivalent. And because you can never satisfy that property here because it keeps going forever, it's a type error. Cool. Would we have to uh, do anything similar to like a do while or for loop? I mean, do something similar. Uh, should we, like, for example, for a question such as this, mm. would we consider mostly stuff to study for is like if else? Ah, yeah, you should study the stuff that we talked about. I wouldn't throw you too big of a curveball oh, okay. <laughs> to throw you a brand new thing here and define the semantics. I didn't know if you would you throw anything like a while loop? They no, if we didn't talk about while loops, then no. And they work different a little bit. I mean, that language, what, what is it? It's functional. Cool. We'll get into a lot of stuff. The lambda calculus is actually very similar to that stuff. More midterm questions? All right, wait, I'll, I'll stop this here and then we can, we can see if there's more stuff we'll talk about.